Good evening and welcome to This Week in 60 Minutes. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening and I must say good evening to all those joining us on Facebook. Uh, I'm your host, Rui Balgovin. And I am your co-host, Juan Edgel Jr. Uh, we would like to apologize for the break last week. It was due to some scheduling issues. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, on tonight's edition of This Week in 60 Minutes, we'll be looking at the topical issue. Um, the hot button issue, rather, the happenings at the CCJ, house to house registration, and more. Uh, with us tonight is PPP Executive, uh, Madam Gil Tashira. Good evening and welcome. Thanks for joining us for the second time, is it? Yes, the second I think time. so, yes. Good, yes. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for having me on the program again. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you back. Um, <laughs> sadly, I wasn't here the last time you were here. I was in Trinidad at the hearings. So Yeah, you were in the hot spot. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching from a distance, yeah. yeah. yeah um, since we're speaking about the CCJ, we knew that the CCJ mandated that on the 4th of July that yes. all parties involved in these cases um, submit submissions um, on the court orders that they wanted yeah. um, based on the ruling on July 18th. Additionally, they have also set a date for the ruling in these uh, consequential yes. orders as July 12, 2019, which would be next week, Friday. Now, since then, um, there have been several exchanges between yourself on behalf of the Leader of the Opposition right. and President Granger. Uh, can you give the viewers an update as to where we stand right now with, with those engagements? <laughs> well, at this very moment, um, this afternoon, I received a call from Mr. Harmon and a letter was delivered to the Levy Opposition Office this afternoon advising that the President is inviting Mr. Jagdu to meet with him tomorrow at 3 o'clock at the Ministry of the Presidency. Okay. And we so have then. accepted the invitation. Okay, so that meeting is happening. So it's a single item agenda and that is the okay. appointment of the Chairman of GCOM. Okay. So okay. we've accepted and um, the delegations on both sides will be worked out um, those, those organizational things are worked out with yeah. Mr. Harmon and myself. But yes. we are pleased that um, the response has been reasonably, not as fast as we would like, because yeah. we were willing to meet all weekend. Yes, yes. But um, <coughs> at least we have a meeting. And I think that, um, you know, the, the, the letter they sent us about the president and the leading opposition having equal uh, shared yeah. responsibilities yes. to give names, I think that um, outside of our response, which was to uphold the Constitution and to uphold the CCJ ruling, was that the response of so many other people, mm -hmm. both on Facebook, in the media, that this was absolutely ludicrous and, and would undermine the actual uh, Constitution. So I'm hoping that that may have had an influence um, on the, 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 the desire to meet with us now. Yes. Although a sneaky part of me believes that the government may have hoped we would have rejected their offers wow. outright. So <laughs> they would have had a reason for more delay, but I'm just being cynical. So have they since reneged on their position mm. to submit names or you, you No, won't be able we to they say. asked for our consideration which we gave. The leading mm. opposition said he's not a, averse mm. to names being informally submitted to him for his that is leading opposition consideration. Mm. They have not responded to that. So oh. we hope we'll see tomorrow mm. if there is any movement on that issue or whether there is they're going through this yeah, the the procedures. Motion, so yeah, let us hope um, that, that it will bring some uh, movement forward. And I believe the government, too, is not insensitive to July 12th mm -hmm. and the fact that the consequential orders, as the court has said, mm -hmm. that the parties have an opportunity to submit their draft orders July 1st. Mm -hmm. And whether they do or not, whether they reach consensus or not, the court will make consequential orders. Yeah, yes. So I think they can't be insensitive that way, whilst they may not agree with it. Mm -hmm. They can't just diss it completely. And so I think they're going through some motions and we hope that it's done in good faith and we are able to reach consensus. But I do, in my cynical mind, do have <laughs> my views that it, it may not, but I don't mind being proven wrong. Well, we know in worst case scenario, and yes. one who know what this is, that um, we, the leader of the opposition, did say that we are asking for, with regards to the chairman of the yeah. of GCOM, for seven days to submit a list and three yeah. days henceforth for right. him to choose yeah, one. Yeah. So even if the meeting tomorrow is not that productive, we still have that to look forward to. Yeah. The and and the, the, you know, the, for the viewers, the search has, has expanded to include um, uh, discussing it with many other people again. So mm -hmm. we're the only leader opposition that has gone 
in the first three lists and consulted civil society and got yes. their views. Yes. Uh, certainly uh, when Mr. Hoyt was president, uh, when uh, Mr. Corbyn and Mr. Hoyt were leading the opposition, including Mr. Granger, mm -hmm. there was no such uh, involvement in civil society. So they were very pleased that even though as we go forward, um, in some cases, probably with older new names that mm -hmm. we have gone f again to be inclusive and yes. to bring in other views of other actors. So to try to build consensus on yes, all sides. That is very important. Uh, speaking of the uh, the consequential orders, we saw that the, the government's attorney, Iman Courtney, he actually refused to state publicly uh, the position of the government uh, in terms of what orders they were looking to receive or the, what orders they were asking for. Uh, actually, up to Tuesday, uh, July 2nd, 2019, we saw a report in the Guarana Chronicle where the government again refused to state what this position is. Uh, what are your thoughts? What could the government <laughs> be? Or what, what, are, what, what, what do you think is their position with regards to this? And why are they refusing to state publicly their position? I, I, I can't talk about the draft orders, but certainly mm -hmm. I think we have an idea what the government's position is. House, yes. House registration um, and the announcement. I think Mr. Marcus in the Caribbean Court of Justice gave it all away mm -hmm. when he said the list would not be, the house to house list would not be finished until December 25th. Mm -hmm. And even the, one of the judges says a very auspicious day. Um, now, that's just for the house to house to be completed. The actual creation of a, and that's for the national registration database. Yes, yes. So that the creation of a preliminary voters list, a final voters mm -hmm. list, candidates and all that, you're talking about minimally, if you're going at a good clip, uh, 50 to 60 days more. Yes. And so, Mr. Marcus, I think, gave away the, the government's position, and we saw mm -hmm. that afterwards with their own action of the protest for yes, uh, yes, no registration, no that. elections, and even their various uh, spokespersons. And one of the key spokespersons for them has been Dr. David Hines, mm -hmm. uh, who has been advocating not only uh, new house-to-house -house registration, but uh, on a program I was with him on, on Sunday with Radio Antigua, he's advocating constitutional reform oh, before election. election. So this is again, <laughs> wow. you know it's like when you're in a race mm -hmm. wow. and you know you keep moving the, the final uh, flag. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you keep moving it all the time and I think that is basically what the government wants to get away with, mm -hmm. fundamentally. As long as possible, to stay in office as long as possible. Okay. Um, while the government is reluctant to say what they want um, or they're asking the CCJ for, as you mentioned, there's call for house to house and that has been so far clear that the government is adamant that there should be a house to house reg registration before yeah. we get to uh, the actual elections. Now, my question to you is what does this uh, instance translate for in terms of Guyanese and those young voters? We know there are a lot of yeah. students overseas studying and over Guyanese overseas working, maybe those that have just left on vacation, and if we proceed with house to house, we they would essentially be deregistered. Yeah, just if you allow me, just to, mm -hmm. to reverse a minute, mm -hmm. and that is to do with the consequential orders. Mm -hmm. um, I should have made the point earlier. Prime Minister Moses Nagamoto, or Moses Nagamoto, because they're not supposed to be ministers <laughs> and yes. so on yeah. anymore. Yeah. They're illegal, but the he pointed out in one of his speeches recently, and you were asking about what's the government's mm -hmm. position. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and they were talking about these are not consequential orders, these are consequential advice. This is not mandatory, it mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, it, you don't have to obey yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really where the government's position is coming from too, that we don't have to obey. And I think Mr. Nandalal in one of his statements pointed out that we would be asking for the opportunity to return to the court mm -hmm. if they yeah. do not obey the consequential mm -hmm. orders. So that kind of view that the, the government is uh, sending out to the populace and, and particularly their own supporters that, you know, we don't have to obey. This is all, this is all mm -hmm. advice. Yeah. It's not mandatory and of course it, that's not true. So mm -hmm. Moses Nagamuto's position <coughs> clearly indicates the, the government's uh, kind of denial Yes. That this is the Caribbean Court of Justice, the Supreme Court, the court is upholding the Constitution, and you have to comply with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, the, the, more, um, the more they talk, the more they expose their, their undemocratic uh, nature of the APNU AFC government. But to get back to your house-to-house, -house, Steve, the, mm -hmm. the, 
One of the things I think, I also want to respond to something that I think Mr. Nagamutu talked about, about the house house registration. Yes, he did mention um, that. First of all, he talked about he was there. Mm -hmm. It's not true. <laughs> he was it there in the naming of the first six people that were put forward by Chelly Jack and Droid. Mm -hmm. No, he was not there. That's number one. But Mr. Nagamutu likes to live in a little pathological <laughs> bubble. Mm -hmm. the, the other issues do with house to house. He gave a chronology of house to house, which is actually inaccurate. The house to house um, came about based on the whole agreements of the 2006 uh, post-election to have this consensus building and, and try to make sure we didn't have violence in the 2006. Mm -hmm. What was clearly the memorandum of agreement which was signed during the 14, 2017 was that we would have this mother of all registrations. Yes. The mother of all registrations and that we would amend the laws to allow for continuous registration every six months yes. to update the list and that would be registration of 14 euros and up. Yep. So the house to house is 14 euros and up. Continuous registration was to do with 14 euros and up. A claims and objection period would follow the house to house to yes. make sure that those who are voters, when the preliminary voters list came out from the, the house to house exercise mm -hmm. and people were, for some reason, not in the country, were in hospital, whatever, mm -hmm. that they could go and make a claim or someone had died in the meantime, and that was for those who are eligible to be 18 at that yes. point. So at this point, where the government is talking about house to house, first of all, the issues of house to house in Guyana, the, there was never, Vincent Alzante, I've heard him say in the, in the media that there was some kind of agreement at every seven years. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely untrue. The agreement of 2007 talks about the one-off mother of all, and this would be the database for Guyana, upon which you would constantly be updating yes. and mm -hmm. refining, refining and stuff like Truly that. Truly continuous registration process. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And when there were <coughs> elections, claims and objections yes. for mm -hmm. the voters. The, the point now is that the, for those, if, if the government insists on going to house house registration, this is a rather serious issue. I think the public needs to know about it. Not just the history of how we reached it, but that the database goes back to zero. Mm -hmm. So the three of us are on the voters list. When they start the house to house registration, we are no longer on the house to house registration. Basically. And a mm -hmm. lot of people feel when you go and talk to them that, oh, I'm on the list. I don't have to go worry about house to house. I don't have to be here. I don't have to be at home when they come. So that's the first thing the public needs to know. Mm -hmm. House to house reduces the list to zero. Yes. You're starting all over again. Fingerprints, photographs, um, and in some cases, new ID. They have not talked about new IDs. If they're talking about new IDs, we're talking about elections later down in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's all those who are 14 years and up who will be able to be registered. People come to their house, and it's quite a long process. Yes. GCOM has said June to November, and then they said December by Mr. Marcus. Mm -hmm. Totally untrue. The, the first uh, projection in 2007 was January 2008 to July 2008. Mm -hmm. That was what, seven months, right? Yes. yes. They, they actually went to nine months by the time the whole okay. thing was finished. Because if you know our country, you go 90 miles up some part of the interior, you come to a small village with 30 people. Yes. Then you go down yes. some creeks and you have to lift up the bushes yeah. and go in, and also on the coastal bases. It yeah. cannot be done in a rapid way. And so when the suspicion of when the government saying, when Mr. Alexander says, well, it could be done between June and November. This, this is a, an indication that if you rush this thing, a lot of people could be left off. Yes. Yes. The other thing on Mr. Alexander talks about that he was advocating that those who are not in the country for three years and uh, three mo months mm -hmm. and more will not be registered. Mm -hmm. That is totally unconstitutional. There's no residency clause in Guyana to yes. say you must be here all the time. Yes. And it is obligatory on GCOM. Mm -hmm. According to the laws that were amended in 2007 and 2008 to follow the memorandum of agreement yes. was that the GCOM has to come back to you. Mm -hmm. They have to ask how many people live here, oh so and so, he's in the bush, whatever, and so they have to come back. Mm -hmm. And they have to leave a, a note, they have to leave a, a pink slip or whatever it is. And if for any reason a person can then go to the center and uh, apply and then the people come to their house. so that. 
the whole idea, it's almost like a census. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a census, except it's from 14 up. Yeah. And, and this whole thing about the house to house. So people have a right, those who were, were not. But the problem is this, that there's no need for a new house to house. There's no need for a new ID card. The database also of all the fingerprints will be erased. Yes. And we must remember one of the critical aspects of the house to house registration in 2007 and the laws that were amended is the, the fingerprinting. Yeah. So no two humans have the same fingerprints. Yeah. So even if Steve and you have the same name, live yeah. at the, you know, and you give the, the two different addresses, same name, the fingerprints will show that you're two different people, yes. mm -hmm. or it will show that you have someone has gone and registered under one name and gone registered under another uh, name. Mm -hmm. So the fingerprints are critical, and there's a database with thousands, hundreds of thousands of fingerprints of Guyanese, and they're verified by Jamaica, by a company in Jamaica, which has been a long-standing arrangement from 2008 to now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that when you eliminate all that, you start all over again, um, it, it is... Oh, it, it, we don't have confidence in, in GCOM and in the process right now. It's an issue of, of confidence. And the behavior of GCOM, um, not just Mr. Patterson, who's thankfully gone, but the, the commission, the, the secretariat, mm -hmm. does not imbue confidence of the public. So house to house too, why is it that we had, okay, the house to house registration in 2008, we then have elections in 2011. We have continuous registration between both times, uh, and then we have claims objection 2011. Yeah. There is no concern by APNU AFC that the list <coughs> is inflated. The list is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, APNU they won by majority in that Exactly, period, that, that, that list <laughs> combined mm -hmm. suddenly gave them uh, uh, combined 33 seats. Yeah. Yeah. In 2015, we were concerned about the list mm -hmm. <coughs> because it was a rapid increase when we were in government in and people registering yeah, and, and we were concerned. And in addition to that, the concerns that they did not run the full, uh, what do you call, fingerprint verification of the entire system is what they should have done for the 2015 elections. Anyway, mm -hmm. claims and objections. APNU AFC had not a problem with that list. Mm -hmm. 2016, no problem. 2018, no problem. Mm -hmm. They started to, to talk, as Amna said, Amna Ali said in March, in July last year, we need a new house to house for the 2020 elections. Mm -hmm. That's how it infiltrated and they came up with house to house. It was for 2020, not for now. So they've always had their eye on a house to house in 2020, not mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And they've been forced to, do, to, to pull it back because of the new confidence motion. But the issue is that all of a sudden you have the president of Ghana saying, 200,000 people are incorrect entries. Mm -hmm. Where yeah, in totally God's false. name did he yeah. find that? Yeah, and how can they verify that? Uh, There's, they, no one has said a thing. So house to house is important that if the government goes in this direction, <coughs> which we will not support, is that people will have to be very vigilant and make sure that their names are there. And I just wanted to give uh, some statistics, which I had here. For the, the 2018 local government elections, there were over 500,000 odd voters for the 80 local authorities. Mm -hmm. That's 90%, 90.5% of the total voters on the list, which is 600 odd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that they had no problem with that list. Yes. So no although problem. it was 500 odd thousand mm -hmm. for the 80 local authorities, only 35% voted. Mm -hmm. But the fact was that list was a, lit a litmus test for the entire list because it's 90.5% on that list for the 80 local authorities for the entire country. And so there were no complaints there. It is, we can have a claims and objection where people go in, they check their list, is it correct, their name spelled correct, correct ID, mm -hmm. and if they don't like their photograph, etc. people who want to make transfers, mm -hmm. um, people who uh, have family who've died and have a death certificate and go in yeah, and make objections. Can, and so forth. And so it can be done within three to f three weeks very easily. I think it's important to point out at this stage that this is not something that the PPP wants but is in conformity with the law. That is what the law stipulates should exactly. happen uh, since yeah. 2008. But, so. but listen to what uh, GCOM's attorney, uh, Stanley Marcus, was saying as you would, would have yeah. highlighted. He said on, on May 8th, when he last addressed the CCG, he, says that, he said that the new National House House registration will be completed in five months and he had given the date June to October. 
and he said that a new list of electors would be ready on November 1, mm -hmm. 2019. Yeah. However, on Monday, June 24th, he shifted uh, the yeah. timeline. Yes, According to him, <laughs> a new list of electors, electors would be ready on December 25th, right. giving us this Christmas gift, quote unquote. <laughs> now, from mid-May 2018 to the early part of July 2018, the Guyana, the Guyana Elections Commission conducted a continuous registration process. Exactly. The names of eligible Guyanese uh, voters are included in that database, database as, as you pointed out, called the National Register of Registrants. Mm -hmm. And the continuous uh, registration process ensured that persons who reached uh, the age of 14 would be added to this database. And when they become 18 years old, so if they're, yeah. they're becoming 18 year, years mm -hmm. old this year, mm -hmm. their names are automatically added to the, uh, the voters list. Uh, the continuous registration process also ensure that all ed eligible persons are registered so that they can be able to vote when the time would have come. It ensures too that other transactions can be conducted as well. So this fact, uh, these facts actually debunks the coalition government's claim that young people will not be able to vote. And this is something that they've been peddling that young yeah. people will be disenfranchised from Yeah, we voting. said that picketing didn't have young people yes. in it. Yes. Well, <laughs> well we, saw, we saw that. It, it, it was actually the opposite. Uh, yeah, and exactly. they're, they're trying to push, push, this, yeah, push yeah. this line that young people are going to be disenfranchised. But we have really stated the facts, and the facts yeah. uh, completely debunk what I think it's important for people to know the house to house is 14 up. The claims yes. and objection is strictly voters. Yes, yes. exactly. Right, and, any, and what the GCOM has to do by law is to, once there's a date you see, yeah. So mm -hmm. this game that GCOM and Grange have been playing, you know, you have to advise me on the date, I can't name the yeah. date because you haven't advised me, is that the date is important. By proclamation, there's a date. So then GCOM will say, this is the qualifying date for you to vote, yeah. that mm -hmm. you'll be 18. So they, they, all of that is unknown right now. What is the qualifying date? Because you have 14 year olds who may have been, um, what you call, um, registered last year obviously they mm -hmm. can't vote yeah. 14 years a year before can't yeah, vote you, you can 14 years a year before that can't vote mm -hmm. you can only be where you reach the age of 18, 18. you're then extracted and, extracted and put onto the voters list by the qualifying mm -hmm. date and so the the yes. government is just playing semantics and trying to confuse people and and create a justification for something they really can't justify yes you know mm -hmm. and going back to a house to house registration um mm -hmm. is just buying time fundamentally the baseline is yeah. The government wants to buy well, time. Here, here's my question to you, though, uh, right. Mr. Shearer. Uh, do you think the court will be swayed by GCOM and the government's arguments and grant an extension that will not see elections being held in three months? The court will have a difficulty with that in the sense that the CCJ also, one of the judges said that they can't enter into the realm mm -hmm. of politics, nor can they enter into the realm of legislature. The separation of powers of the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary the, the, and as even uh, Roxanne George said in her ruling, that I can't put a proviso into the Constitution that's not there. Yes, I can't exactly. create something that's not there. I can only deal with what's there. And so the court will have difficulty, I think, saying if the government says we can't do house, to, we can't do election, we need house to house, it's absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. The court will have difficulty in two scores in my mind as a non lawyer. One is that. The court recognizes you have to go back to Parliament and get an extension. Yes. yes. So they've constantly they, spoken they, about they, you have to have a two thirds. They cannot. Mm -hmm. The court cannot deviate from that. The court cannot arbitrarily give a date and say, "Okay, we're giving you three months more or six months mm -hmm. more," because it would obviously be fundamentally flawed. Yes. They ha you have to go to the legislature and, uh, for the two thirds majority. So the court will have difficulties doing that because the court cannot speak for the legislature. Yes. Nor can it undermine the constitution that it's upholding. No, well, that's that's the point. Right? They they yeah. can't that's do the it. They, uh, my view is they can't do it. The government. The problem with the government is that I, they will very much probably carry that line, mm -hmm. and when the court uh, will most likely say it has to uphold the constitution, mm -hmm. the elections are due uh, should have been due. In yes. fact, they're being asked to rule on something that's past the time. Yes. Exactly. Very they're, they're borrowed way time past as the time. They're borrowed yeah. time, mm -hmm. and in fact, I think uh, as of Sunday. It was 191 days, we're about 194 days now yeah. um, since the wow. no-confidence motion. So time, as one of the judges said, the clock is ticking, exactly. which is yeah. what we were talking about all yes. the time. Yes. And so the, the, I think that the court will has to, they have no other choice but to uphold the Constitution. Yes. 
and just to come back to Mr. Nagamoto's comments um, recently, yeah. just Sunday he mentioned in his article, uh, My Turn, that um, while GCOM lawyer Mr. Marcus is saying that November 25th will be when the list will be ready, we cannot expect elections until probably February, March of the following year, uh, 2020, because there are certain things that need to be done, which means yeah. they are on the path to delay even further. So um, let me just go through quickly some facts about the claims and objection sure. period so that our viewers would understand exactly right. what this is. Sure. And um, So a valid list of electors, uh, GCOM can hold a claims and objection exercise that will allow any eligible Guyanese who has reached the age of 18 years old to be registered if their name is not on the voters list, allow any eligible Guyanese to get a transfer from one voting district to another, in the event that they change their place of residency, allow all eligible Guyanese to do a name change, allow for the removal of a dead person from the voters list, allow for objections to be made to the name of someone not eligible to be on the voters list. Now there's a lot of misinformation being peddled by the government and the government spokesperson out there. Um, what would you say to those persons or to the, to the viewing audience um, on this matter? Now that I've just pointed out these facts. The, the, the claims <coughs> and objection is an important uh, safeguard in terms of anybody who's not on the list that uh, is eligible to be on the list. So it's critical for people to exercise their, their civic duty, their constitutional right to choose their government um, and to elect people. So that if for anybody, any reason, someone falls in that group, they should actively in the claims objection, go and get registered. Yes. Um, they need a birth certificate, which in some of the interior areas has been a challenge, and unfortunately, GCOM has not been very active from what we hear in some parts of the interior where the system we had, the request <coughs> for birth certificates, particularly for the <coughs> elderly Amerindians in the villages, would come to Amerindian Affairs, what is now Indigenous Affairs, and then go to GCOM. And we are picking up stories that some of these requests and applications have been sitting there for months and months and, G and GRA, GRO has done nothing. So one, yes, your, your eligibility is age, born in Guyana, birth certificate. A person who is naturalized Guyanese has a right to vote yes. and, and to be registered. A person who is a Commonwealth citizen mm. has a right to be, to be registered once they've been here legally for one year. Mm -hmm. Now some people don't remember what are the Commonwealth countries. So. Haiti, <laughs> Cuba, Venezuela, Brazil are not Commonwealth countries. Yes, In other words, countries that were former British colonies. Exactly. So the Caribbean uh, English-speaking countries, for example, parts of Africa, India, etc. And so Commonwealth citizens that are legally here for one year, which means in their passport there must be their stamp and their visa that they are legally here staying and residing mm -hmm. for one year. Mm -hmm. Um, students from the CARICOM, who are the Commonwealth countries, obviously, mm -hmm. um, once they're here for one year. The persons who are not eligible, you can have persons who are, are legally here in Guyana, but they're not Commonwealth countries. They cannot be registered, even if they marry a Guyanese, and, but if they're not citizens as yet or naturalized as yet, they cannot go on the voters list. Um, to do a name change, again, it's a, a person has to go to the court and get a, 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 a deep poll and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Women who are divorced, there's an issue with women that was divorced in the 2008 yeah. registration, which we sorted out with GCOM at the time. Mm -hmm. A woman who is married uh, accepts many times the husband's name. Others hyphenate yes, the two names. True. Mm -hmm. But what GCOM had a problem with in 2008 was women who were divorced and they were forcing the women to, to register under their husband's name, their ex-husband's name. Mm -hmm. And this was brought to the attention of GCOM and there was legal uh, an, uh, assessment and it was found that no, she would go back to her maiden name. Okay. If she wished to keep her husband's name, she could, but mm -hmm. by being divorced, she goes back to her maiden name and therefore her right is to be uh, registered in the maiden name. You have children who are adopted. Yes. All those things yeah. are, yeah. all of those are, are eligible with their adoption birth certificates and stuff like that. Um, persons who are uh, living abroad and come back home and live for a period of time, they're eligible once they're Guyanese. Mm -hmm. yes. You can't remove the right of Guyanese to 
to, uh, to vote. Yes. So those are some of the issues. And on the death certificate one, you can only uh, remove a person from the list based on an actual death certificate. So you can't just go and say someone died for you. And that's the only reason, only way you can take someone off the list. Yes. Well, you were speaking before about the government and their position right now, or their strategy is to hold on to power, so they continuously are trying to uh, extend the finish line. But uh, we, we saw last week that the leader of the opposition, he actually spoke about the, uh, the mad rush to grab lands by this government. Yeah. Now, a lot of Guyanese are increasingly worried about the government's attempts to remain in office. Uh, what do we say to them uh, concerning this uh, this, this, this that is occurring within the government structure right now? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the, the government was illegal as of March 21st. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Granger and the government refused to do what the Constitution required when the no-confidence motion was passed, and the CCJs upheld that, that once the government, the, they lost the confidence vote, the government was, the president and cabinet were resigned, stood resigned. Mm -hmm. yes. And therefore, the CCJ talks about a caretaker government yeah, preparing for elections. Yeah. The government has ignored that, uh, thumbed their nose at that, say there's no provision for that, even question the issue of whether no confidence motion is legal and stuff. And they've been defeated, mm -hmm. as Mr. Williams said, Basil Williams said, we have been defeated on every conceivable yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> every conce uh, point yes. we made. Yes. And so it was a confession <laughs> on his part. <laughs> Uh, they exceeded defeat. Yeah. Um, but the issue, though, then is what the government has been doing in the last six months. It has been spending money like wild. It has gone for supplementaries. Mm -hmm. It has uh, been violating the procurement rules in many cases. We've come up with more scandals in terms of that. And the, the latest one, it's not the only one, but the one right now, mm -hmm. uh, is the grabbing of lands. Now, the... The reaction of people, uh, there are several reactions. One is the government's usual reaction whenever anything comes out exposing them, is to pull the last card that they have. Mm -hmm. Always they pull the card they have is race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here it is that this PPP, bad PPP civic, is uh, making it that afro Guyanese men, or people can't own land. This is not the issue, this is a, a mad, um, distribution and, and giving out a land in a period when the government is illegal mm -hmm. in yeah. the main. And to friends and supporters. And to their cronies. Yeah. These yeah. are members. Now, I want to bring one point, and that is that there are a number of Indo Guyanese mm -hmm. who are cronies of the government. <laughs> also, self confessed as well. Uh, self confessed. Yeah. So, cronyism hasn't got to do with race, mm -hmm. it has to do with an elite that is benefiting, being given preferential, due, preferential treatment mm -hmm. by the government. Many cases they're financiers or they, they uh, mm -hmm. have some value to the government. And so you have BK, Badal, Larry Singh, remember the one with the bar? Yeah. Uh, the Lloyd one Singh. with the Lloyd Singh, the mm -hmm. wind farm, mm -hmm. Badal, um, and you have BK with the ha Hugs Bosch. Bosch with the letter, yeah. You're talking about billions of dollars, billions. Mm -hmm. No one came out and said, why are you attacking Indo-Guyanese men yes. for benefiting? Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. So why is it that these were five Indo-Guyanese men who profited, did mm -hmm. very well, and have been doing very well mm -hmm. under the, the APNU AFC government, mm -hmm. and who continue to support it despite what they're doing? And then you have the gentlemen that were exposed by leading opposition. And now these are people who are right in the belly of the government. Mm -hmm. They're in the ministry of the presidency. The, the president certainly must, must if, you know, want to do something about this level of corruption. You have Marlon Bristol having Dalawala land, 12 acres. The, the, and when was this done? June. June. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the exact date, at least I'm not sure of the exact date, but certainly it's around the time when CCJ was, it was coming out with, before with the ruling. Um, ruling. So this so is now so. give, out, give out fast. Yeah. Why, why can't there, are there other people who apply for Dalawala? Just like when you go to Lowenfield. Mm -hmm. Lowenfield gets landed Millie's hideout. Mm -hmm. 216 acres, wow. June 2019. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this is all on the eve or just around when the CCJ is ruling. So let, let's take care of you boys quickly. Mm -hmm. Let's give out quickly. You know, you're handing out sweeties. But again, Millie's hideout in Linden. These are APNU, supposedly APNU areas. Yeah. Supposedly, I, won't, I will not agree to APNU having transport in any part of Guyana. Exactly. Yes. But 
these are these are what they see as their territory mm -hmm. yes. and their, their transport, holes, yeah. their strongholds. Millie's hideout, two hundred and sixteen acres. Mm -hmm. Are they telling me that that Londoners didn't apply for Millie's hideout all this Indeed. time? Did they give out to people in Millie's hideout before twenty nineteen or even on the eve of twenty nineteen as as they're doing now? Mm -hmm. Lowenfield, why this this is so vulgar, it is so obscene when the chief elections officer of Guyana, who is expected to be the guardian of the electoral machinery, mm -hmm. is being given preferential treatment for 1,297 acres in February 2019. It's the timing. It's the timing. It's the, you know, I mean, it, there's, there's a level of vulgarity and obscenity about it. Mm -hmm. How do we trust now, if I just say that if it was a PPP, a man who was thought to be PPP is the chief elections officer. <laughs> you would hear the whole place yes. broke up, yeah, right? It broke up war, yeah. according to Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. Because this would mean the man is no longer trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So no, why no. is it when low and field getting land, it's not doesn't have the same impact on on them? Mr. Eric Phillips, we know his views. Eric Phillips is the one who has been attacking Amerindian communities, saying they have too much land. Mm -hmm. Yes saying that the afro guyanese slaves, slaves that came from Africa, came here before the Amerindian communities. The Amerindian communities like were this. here between seven and 11,000 years ago by archaeological carbon dating. Mm -hmm. Yet he's saying that the Amerindians have too much land. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, let's take that view of Mr. Phillips, who is also on the reparations committee, right? But he only taken care of himself mm -hmm. because he got 1,000 acres in Ezekiel River, April 2019, Another 100 acres in Demerara River, 2019. Where is his magnanimous uh, view that, that afro guyanese descendants should also get land? In fact, why, why wasn't this 1,000 acres he get shared in fact, with Mr. some of the brothers that in, he's supposed yes, to be representing? In fact, Mr. Eric Phillips <laughs> was sisters, very yeah. silent <laughs> when um, the government revoked the lease of over 100 afro guyanese farmers in Region 5, which the PP had to go and then represent, and they got back those exactly. lands. Exactly. Along with when Mr. Lincoln Lewis was claiming an entire village in Region 5, exactly. yeah, Kingley. You didn't hear a word yeah, from yeah. anyone, or it wasn't about or it was race or anything like that. It wasn't race, yeah. it wasn't brought out. Yeah. And it was the PPP, I must point out, that had to step in and help these people yeah. uh, through our lawyers and get, get them back the on their lands. But the whole move by the general. MMA to remove farmers who've been there mm. for years and years, making a decent living. They're not criminals, they're, they're robbing nobody, they're just trying to mm. make a living, taking away their land. And yet you're coming back. And some of them were afro guyanese and indo guyanese yes. It wasn't one ethnic group. Mm -hmm. And yet you're handing out sweeties to your big boys. Mm -hmm. Look at the one to do with, the one that, that, that really scares me. Uh, this is, the rest is just land grabbing mm -hmm. and, and cronyism. But, yes. but the one that worries me is the Great Wall Inc., mm -hmm. which is the Shunad for sure in Region 3. Mm -hmm. That worries me the most. It's 20 acres. But what worries me the most is the 40 acres in the Demerara River. My understanding of the law is that nobody owes the owns the waterways of Guyana. Mm -hmm. That's public state property. Yeah. No one owes that. How do you have 40 acres of the river belonging to a company? And what is prime, pr presently right now, mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the waterways to, to come into Georgetown, mm -hmm. uh, the wharfs there and stuff like that. It is against the law as far as I'm concerned. Nobody owns the waterways of Guyana. Whether it's a creek, a river, it is not owned mm -hmm. by anybody. It is our asset. And here is 40 acres of the river owned by a private company. Mm -hmm. This is, this again is uh, absolutely shocking. And so the, the issue of the government waving as always race, mm -hmm. always raising, ra waving race is the last resort and it's been used as a kind of uh, a mechanism to, to primevally call to people. Say, go back to your, your kith and kin. Don't, don't worry with these PPP people. It's a call to kith and kin, kith and kin, as Hoyt talked about uh, during the, the, um, uh, the 2000 and uh, Blackie funeral and stuff like oh, that. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is kith and kin. The problem is that these are the cronies of the APNU AFC. How much land, Steve and Juan, have been given out to working people of Guyana in the housing program? Yeah, when we were in government, <laughs> when we were in government, 
I always talk about the housing program of Guyana being the jewel in the crown. Yeah. That 100,000 people, 100,000 house lots were given out, benefiting probably hundreds of thousands of people. People in different stages of building. We were giving out, I think, if my figures are right, about 4,000 house lots a year, sometimes more. Mm -hmm. How much, when we listen to the debates, you've been in the debates, yeah. mm -hmm. when the Minister of Housing gets up and talks about how many house lots have been granted, 400, 300 yeah. per year? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Same where way. is this great thing? And Mr. Granger then talks uh, just about, uh, about two months ago about homelessness. And that before yes. he demits he wants, office, he, he will end homelessness. So what yes. you've been doing for the five years? Exactly. What you've been doing for the five years? The land has been distributed yes. um, willy-nilly to your cronies, to your mm -hmm. APNU AFC supporters, your financiers. But the ordinary afro guyanese people, the ordinary indo guyanese Amerindians and Mix and everybody mm -hmm. else, have to struggle to get their house yes. lot. And not even that, then you're taking it back from them as well. As exactly. You're, saying, you're revoking. Yeah, the because we had to them. represent people mm -hmm. when they first came in mm -hmm. who actually had houses there, and the mm -hmm. Minister Bulkan and so said the houses are unoccupied yes. and took yes. them away. You Those people that. had to go to court as well. Absolutely. So that the land issue is, I believe, probably of all the scandals. I mean, there's, there's 60 odd, we're now going to 70 scandals we've discovered so far. But the this one is probably. One of the most vulgar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the location of where these lands yeah, are going. It's all um, the earmarked for Deepwater Harbor. Exactly. Exactly. They're all linked to yeah. where they know mm -hmm. because this is this is also future. called abroad. It's called insider trading. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. This is and this is That's from the correct. Ministry of the Presidency. That's so correct. the Ministry of Presidency must have and should have access to know in the oil and gas sector. Well, here are where some yes. of the areas mm -hmm. that will have to be developed, where the deep water, where the uh, wharves and stuff like that. And so this is insider trading as well. Yes. Where some people, how would well, how would a company know yes. that to take the foreshore? Yes, and it's a criminal you act, know? actually. And so insider trading is illegal. Yes. <laughs> and I think that, that um, this particular one is one that I think Gaini should really, really be revved up about. Um, because I think it really, uh, it shows a level of the government yes. um, be willing to flaunt anything and, and thumb their nose, not only the constitution of the Guyanese people, they're basically thumbing their nose of the Guyanese people. Say, so what are you going to do about it? So we are giving it out already. <laughs> um, so we have uh, another few minutes here remaining on the program, and we will now move on to a bit more that I'm sure a lot of the viewers would like to hear from one of the leaders of the party, is um, our focus on the next PPPC government. So. Um, <clears throat> Before we move into the promises and manifestos, um, there's been a, a, some persons sympathetic to the government trying to compare the first four years of the PPPC in administration as the four years of the coalition government in administration. However, we know that the realities were different then yeah. as opposed to now. For example, um, debt servicing was 153% of revenue in 1992 as compared to 2015 when the government took office, the AP and UFC, okay. is just 5% of total revenue. Um, the national economy was 30 million US dollars in 1992. And when the government took office, it was four billion US dollars in 2015. Um, obviously, that means that there's a capacity to deliver the excuses by the government that we cannot, we don't have the money to build house lots or build roads and stuff like that. And we know we've seen them spending a lot of money increasing dietary in office by 1.6 billion, etc., and local travel and stuff like that. Now, what do you say are the main differences if we were to <laughs> do a comparison? Of the of a PPC government with the PNC government, what are what are the you main? You mean when we get back into government? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because my position is always with the government in waiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always saying that that we're the government in waiting, mm -hmm. yes. and that the 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 many promises they made, job creation. We've already gone on rec record and showed, in a variety of ways, that we can create jobs, very simply, very quickly, and. We are talking about 50,000 jobs in a specific period of time, but very quickly within the first year, we can create 10 to 15,000 jobs uh, back again. The um, social safety nets, cash care, the um, programs that help, the school feeding programs, all these things are clearly on the works already. 
-hmm. The removal, the key one, which I think everyone wants to wants, and that's what we've been talking about from 2015, mm -hmm. it going into the manifesto is just kind of logical, mm -hmm. and that's the the reversal of these taxes. <coughs> so they use the used tires. They uh, limit on cars that must be um, younger than eight years. Mm -hmm. The issue of um, VAT on essential goods for for yes. people, food stuff, drugs, the, the mining equipment, the re yeah. the the removal of the duty free concessions for yes. the mining sector, yes. manufacturing sector, even the solar power, individual household mm -hmm. solar powers, which we had made VAT free, mm -hmm. VAT exempt. They have kind of knocked that out and brought it in only for the companies. Mm -hmm. So the, the, we've said very clearly, those things are being reversed by the PP government. And we believe by that one act, and there's several legislative pieces we have to reverse, that that will be an immediate incentive to the economy and stimulate the economy. And so those are some very immediate things that we're talking about. They're transformative projects. The more we see what's happening to GPL, the more righteous we are. In well, terms yes, of the Amila yes, Falls, yes, yes. more people who didn't believe in Amila, and I was yes. like, yeah, they're they were begging, right. They're begging, <laughs> they were right about it, it, you know. Begging yeah. for Amila, you know. Um, so that for. tinkering, this tinkering, it's unfortunate uh, that they've taken the eighty million dollars U.S. that what we earned in carbon trading, and taken it with agreement with the Norwegian to not hold it for Amila mm -hmm. for or a big project, mm -hmm. but now we'll dissipate it in smaller. Um, hydro projects around the country. Mm -hmm. God knows where that money will go. Mm -hmm. But as I said, we're governing and waiting, and if we have elections in three months, mm -hmm. they won't get their hands on that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and we may get a mile back on. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the life of people will, will, I think, will see a very quick shift in the, their lives with these, just these very simple measures which I've gone into. There are many, many others. We've had consultations, we've had na national consultation. <laughs> <coughs> and the manifesto is being written, yes. and so there are a lot of details that people will see. And so I think that um, people will, will see a, a very yes. quick shift uh, once we're in government to move yes. forward quickly to bring change for our people and improvement. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, Guyanese uh, are expecting greater transparency from a PPPC government, and the party has actually promised greater transparency. Can you expound on this? Yeah, th well, I mean, we brought in the laws. The, the, the problem with this government, they haven't been obeying the laws. Mm -hmm. So the Procurement Act, when it came in um, in 2003-2004, was way ahead of the rest of the Caribbean CARICOM countries. Yes. In fact, in 2010, a number of them started to borrow it. Mm -hmm. So the Procurement Act, the Fiscal um, Management Accountability Act, the constitutional changes to do with how one treats the with the finances of the country. Mm -hmm. The um, Integrity Commission. Integrity Commission, Integrity yes. Commission, for example, and ensuring that people are reporting and are, and even the other part that we had, which is completely changed, is the websites, access to yes. information. You try getting access to information on our government website. So the whole Very idea easy. of that yes. was to put as much stuff publicly on the government websites, mm -hmm. and therefore the request to the commissioner, who would no longer exist, they've knocked him out, knocked him off his job, um, was to take those requests that were not on the website. Mm -hmm. So I think that those are some things to bring back um, and mm -hmm. to have much more accountability and transparency of the Public Procurement Commission, etc. Okay, Mr. Shira, uh, just before we ask you for your closing remarks, or maybe you can address this question in your closing remarks for me because we have very limited time remaining. See, the yeah. operators are frantically waving at us. <laughs> um, uh, we recently saw the government uh, issue a bold statement that the cabinet has approved certain proposals yeah. to decriminalize 30 grams of marijuana or less and um, in the coming months. So um, in your closing remarks, could you address this what can only be viewed as a, not a ploy, as the PP said in its statement yesterday. Well, I think the government's <coughs> trying to, to muster supporters wherever they are. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the two things with that. One is that the cabinet is not supposed to exist, so how is it making decisions? It's illegal mm -hmm. government. Secondly, that this has to go to parliament and we'll have to have a vote on it, mm -hmm. an amendment. So this sudden announcement is just to raise people's hopes again. But I wanted to quote from someone who would put up on the Facebook, and I thought it was quite charming and it should be used, mm -hmm. um, that in 2016, the AFC said we should decrim decriminalize small amounts of weed. And this is what Mr. Hughes was talking about, except his small amounts of weed was like 
uh, quite a number of pounds. <laughs> 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 the APNU said, no, 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 yeah. right? Then in 2018, I remember Mr. Carrington brought the the, the bill, bill uh, to do now the bill was never seen he raised mm -hmm. the motion to bring the bill yes we and it was blocked mm -hmm. from 2016 right to now mm -hmm. so Carrington's been sitting there 2018 mr. Basil Williams says we need a referendum <laughs> to decide on this issue mm -hmm. Moses Nagamuti says there should be widespread consultations mm -hmm. Harman says the law is the law that's yeah. the end right? so that's 2018 <laughs> yeah. 2018 we then have the no confidence motion 2019 mm -hmm. We have elections in the air. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, cabinet says, what an excellent idea. Let's do it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, so it is so transparently opportunistic. Yes. Yes. It is transparently opportunistic. I'm sure the Rastafarians are very happy to hear that. But the proof is in the pudding. Yes. They promised in the, tw in the uh, manifesto in 2015 yes. that they would move in this direction. They've been there for four, five, going on five years now. It's mm. fifth year. Yeah, and, year. And now they're going to wait at the nth hour mm. to then throw out this sweetie, mm. you know, to say, okay, we're going to do it, boys. Vote for us kind of thing. It's so yeah. transparent. So I think more and more the government is getting more and more vulgar. Mm. And their vulgarity is mm. becoming more and more, uh, uh, what do you call it, open and available. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sharon, sure. once again for being on the program and sharing with us all those very important information. Um, for those of you who have just joined us, uh, some very important information came to light. Uh, we know that the leader of the opposition and the president will be meeting tomorrow in the evening to discuss the very important matter of appointing a new chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. Uh, additional to that, we spoke about the House House registration and spoke about the inaccuracies that has been peddled by the government uh, spokespersons and those other sympathizers for the um, well, the coalition government on Facebook claiming that we need to get house to house so that persons 18 and older can be registered. That's a total falsehood. Um, so. so we want to thank you for being with us this last hour, and we do look forward to you joining with us next week once again. So well, thank you very much for having me. And thank you for being with us this evening, <laughs> <laughs> Madam Gil Tashira. Thank you, thank you very much. See you next week. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you. Bye.